Hello and welcome to the show. Now the latest update for BMNG Drive has changed around quite a lot how drive lines work in cars and that in turn has broken a lot of mods and a lot of various sort of mod parts and configurations for cars just don't work anymore. Which means for this episode I have uh, decided to change around the gravity. I did see a comment a little while ago uh, asking uh, to mess around with this and I figured it sounded like fun and yeah, let's see what would happen. We start with an ETK 800 series high powered all wheel drive estate car with the gravity set to that of the moon which means we struggle to get going, we struggle to get stopped and when it comes to jumps you do kind of float quite a lot, a lot further than I was expecting it to. We saw <laughs> into the scenery uh, yeah, uh, admittedly I wasn't going as, oh, I wasn't going massively fast for that uh, turn one crash. We already do about 56, 57 miles an hour, just struggling to put the power down. However, that was way, way too much speed. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I knew we were going to go floating. I didn't quite know how much we were going to go floating. And yeah, 56 miles an hour is way, way too much for that as the car goes tumbling off the course. I do seem to remember doing... A, a run down Mount Chiliad, certainly messing around with Mount Chiliad with the Moon Gravity Cheat on GTA 5 and that has set the record, I believe, for most rolls in a single crash by me. I think it's around 48 rolls in that one. I don't think the ETK here quite manages to, uh, to do that many. It's certainly impressive. And the thing with any of the crashes with the Moon Gravity is they just go on forever. There's no <laughs> there's no real stopping the uh, the crashes with them. The car does eventually come to a rest. I think the vehicle might even be possibly possibly spinning at least a wheel in that crash. Of course, the impacts are less vicious in this one just because there's less force uh, behind the car falling. Now, when you do get over the crest, you've got to be very, very slow over that part. Then getting slowed down for the second corner is uh, none too easy. You don't really have a huge amount of grip, and you don't really slow down very well. And <laughs> then if you are going sideways, it's incredibly easy for the car to just bounce and roll over. That was very much sort of a jelly car roll, almost, just by going sideways on tarmac in a low, well, a relatively low sports estate. Which is pretty, pretty impressive going from... <laughs> From the ETK there. When you do manage to get the car slowed down for turn two, well, this is always going to be a problem area, the bridge jump. I'm not even going massively fast here. This is 28 miles an hour we leave the bridge jump. It is about right in terms of distance, but it's the fighting to try and get the car back under control once it has landed. You then, I didn't really know where to brake on this, so I braked kind of roughly where I would normally, because I'm going about 20 miles an hour, but uh, I get a wheel caught on the dirt, and I, you just can't fight with the car. Even when you're doing 20 miles an hour, it's quite infuriating, I'll be honest. Um, at, at, yeah, 20 miles an hour, you, you think you can be able to get control of the vehicle? You can't. You just bounce around and you fall off the cliff. It looks very much as if someone has taken footage of a normal run and just slowed it down, which I guess kind of does make sense, but uh, yeah. yeah, you don't have a huge amount of control. Now, it didn't actually take me very many attempts wise to get to the bottom of the mountain. It did take a fair bit of time though, much like we had with the caravan trailer last time out, because there is not a huge amount of speed and everything is incredibly, incredibly slow motiony, it did take quite a long time, uh, actual, actual time-wise, to uh, to get the hang of it. It's basically all about being cautious with this. one. I said it about quite a few cars in various different ways. In the case of the Moon Gravity, it's about making sure the car doesn't get off the ground. You cannot let the car lift off the ground, whether it be from the crest at turn one, whether it be from a bump or whatever it is, because as soon as it starts lifting off the ground or starts twisting or something, you're going to be in trouble. Also, getting the vehicle slowed down is very, very difficult. It's very, very easy to miss the breakover, especially into that second corner. It's one of the bigger braking zones on the course. But uh, yeah, you've got to make sure you can get the car slowed down. It's 13 miles an hour uh, going up towards the giddy heights of 20 through here. Almost, almost 20. It's 19 now and we're going very, very sideways. Almost plummeting my way off the course. Managed to correct it. Now, my theory behind picking the, the ETK here, I want to say it was all-wheel drive naturally gives me the best chance of getting any power down towards the road really got to slow the car down here for the bridge jump much like we have done with the caravan with the t-rex when it tried to take down the giant farm trailer got to really slow it down because it's going to jump quite a long way anyway if you're doing 40 miles an hour across there you saw miles and you lose control 
yeah, the reason behind picking the ETK was that the all-wheel drive for the maximum traction, quite powerful. I don't know whether that's going to be particularly helpful, but um, yeah, to make the most of what little traction there is, so I do have some go about it. But I didn't want to pick a big off-road car. I figured something with incredibly soft suspension, suspension designed for off-roading, would bounce around a lot. Because when I mean, this is bouncing around quite a lot, this is going up on its side through heavy cornering sometimes as we're struggling for traction. It's 14 miles an hour. There's almost a canyon wall tap going on. <laughs> it, it literally just looks like someone has taken a normal car down. If you ignore the speedo, it does look, look like someone's slowed down the footage. I can't drive it any faster than this. We're, I'm pretty much pushing the limits of this car in various places down this course. It's incredibly slow, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what it can do. However, yeah, going for a, a big off-road car, I think it would just bounce. And, you know, you'd be going around a corner, and it would I think it would just tip over, to be honest. Or if there does hit a bump of any sort, it's just going to have issues. So I went for a, you know, a lot more of a, a road car, a sportier car suspension that uh, is a lot firmer in the hope that it would stop it bouncing around. Because I've not got to worry about survivability in here. We're going way, way too slow. We are way too slow for for you know any of the bumps to cause an issue. And if we do get airborne, you know, while I'm trying to avoid it, if we do get airborne, as again, it's another 14 mile an hour drift. Um, we're not going to come back down to the to the ground with as much force, anywhere near as much force. So yeah, a sort of sports car. But this is a sports estate, though. It made made sense to me as a as a vehicle to pick to uh, tackle this course. I actually get a big twitch coming down this straight, do a little bit of an endo across the grass. We're up to the giddy heights of 42 miles an hour here, almost getting up to 50. No, not quite though. Had to, go, <laughs> to have a little bit of a lift as we found ourselves wandering out wide. It's just so difficult to get the car turned. And it's one of those things that's very, very difficult to drive, even though you're going incredibly slowly. There's a huge, huge two-wheeled moment for the ETK. I was really surprised. I thought that was me done for when it lifted up onto its side. I'm quick quick counter steering did get it back down and the difficulty with counter steer especially when you're with this sort of gravity if you, you counter steer it too much you just end up or you know counter steer it enough to try and save it you can end up just firing yourself off the road we do get to 53 miles an hour across the line <laughs> catch a wheel on the dirt and go for a roll and that breaks lots of things in the car it made it down though I did make it through the course. It is not spectacular. It's spectacular when it crashes. It's not spectacular when it's when it's driving. However, up next is uh, kind of the opposite, really. I've gone for Jupiter gravity. So this is, I think, about two and a half times that of Earth. We've got uh, the D-Series Beast, this one is called. Very, very large, very heavy, but incredibly strong pickup truck. It has also got a Stage 3 supercharged v8 engine so plenty of power although getting up the hill it struggles because there is so much gravity it really really struggles to climb the hill once we're down the other side though we rapidly accelerate and then comes the big plus point brakes phenomenal and handling because we've effectively got a, a, a lot more downforce the car can take incredible speeds around the corner there is so much grip in this in the end that's what gets me into trouble there is so much grip that the frame rate can't quite deal with uh, <laughs> deal with the forces involved in that particular crash yeah because it's got uh, essentially a huge amount of downforce going on there's a huge amount of well, gravity pushing the car into the road you can take corners so incredibly well and you can take corners so much faster than you're expecting that you misposition the vehicle you misposition the vehicle you turn in too soon you turn in too much into a corner and things go wrong much like we saw with the moon gravity clip having the cars you know, having the footage looking like it is slowed down this just looks like i've sped up the footage that's not that's not what i've done here i've not been cheating you can see what the speedo is reading um yeah it's, it's absolutely bonkers it's a really weird thing to try and wrap your head around this is going into turn one i turn in at 60 and with 70 miles an hour through there and i actually turn in too much the car has too much grip and I get fired across the inside and then stuck in a ditch. You know, not particularly what you want to be doing. The truck was actually surviving some of the minor crashes relatively well. And you've got to bear in mind here that there is a lot of forces going on when this thing crashes. Hence why I went for a reinforced truck. Why I went for an off-road truck as I'm trying. I, I may have pushed it a bit too hard through there. I may have pushed my luck slightly as we go rapidly tumbling down the hill, shedding bodywork. This time it's not quite such a lag-inducing crash as we cartwheel and disintegrate around. Almost a car flag as well at the end of it. Uh, admittedly not the biggest of trees to try and wrap a car flag around, but... Uh, yeah, it's a huge, huge amount of forces going on, which is why I wanted a 
big reinforced truck. And again, why I wanted off-road suspension this time. We're not going to get the bouncing effect because the gravity is too much. And I was hoping the off-road suspension would keep the vehicle under control. If we went for the sort of the stiffer sports car, it just disintegrate itself whenever we took a jump where something like this, I was hoping, could survive it. As I said, struggles to get up the hill, as you can imagine, only getting about 67 miles an hour, but it's up to 110 before turn two. And look at the speeds you can take through that second corner. Again, we're carrying absolutely incredible speed through these turns. The downside, though, is we can't quite accelerate out the other side in the same manner because there is just so many forces going on with the vehicle. It is flat out across the bridge jump. Now, we don't, don't get the air time, but we do get a very heavy impact. Again, hence why I wanted that reinforced truck, why I wanted a strong truck, is again, mega, mega speed around the pond hairpin, keeping it above 50 miles an hour. Because, yeah, a normal road car would just be destroyed by that impact. But we can get away with it in this. Up into the tunnel hairpin. <laughs> it's so late on the brakes and just throw it into the corner. There's grip. There is astronomical levels of grip that you just don't expect. As I said, trying to get used to it, trying to get used to that amount of grip. It boggles the mind, quite frankly. That's 120 miles an hour running downhill into these fast S's. And there is no need to lift. It is flat out all the way through these corners. I might have forgotten to put the uh, performance radiator on. And the engine is about to disintegrate as we come around the final corner and do cross the line there. Yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. Quite frankly, it is absolutely balmy. However, a really, really quite interesting experience to go driving with is, is all sorts of, it's not a happy vehicle i'll be honest um yeah no, not not a happy vehicle let's face it most of that run was done flat out it's the first car i think ever to be flat out through the entire final section there and it, it can do it it has the grip admittedly it does go slightly uphill through that final section which will cost the car a little bit of speed because it can't accelerate uh, it hasn't quite got it's got a lot of power but it hasn't quite got enough to keep accelerating while trying to uh, go uphill around there but uh, yeah a crazy crazy run now for our final vehicle i've gone i've gone for the h15 vanster again this vehicle set a very very impressive time when it when it went down normally and i was curious to see how it would compare with the gravity sets to that of Uranus, I believe. It might have been Neptune. I'll have to check. Um, I'll, I'll put up a, a little edit on the top because I just completely slipped my mind. It's got more powerful gravity than the default setting and the Earth setting, if you like, but it isn't as crazy as that of Jupiter. And, yeah, I might have slightly forgotten that coming into the first corner. <laughs> I just kind of turned in and break. I knew I wasn't quite going to have the same grip, but uh, I wasn't quite sure. And or I wasn't quite aware of how much less grip I was going to have. And I got brave and just sort of threw it in. Again, too much speed. Too much speed through the S's put me all, all out of position for the bridge jump. Uh, clipped, clipped the inside that launched me into the concrete. And that broke everything at the front of the van. These vans are strong. By the way, the, 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 the H-13 van is a very, very tough vehicle. Can survive some huge crashes. But uh, that, that uh, impact with the concrete wall killed just about everything. In, certainly at the front of the vehicle. Uh, again, trying to carry that mega speed through the uh, the s's towards the finish line is a little bit too much for the van i brush alongside a tree is enough to rip one of the front wheels apart and send us a little bit down the side of the of the can not quite as bad as that concrete wall however yeah still a fair bit of damage and it was trying to find a level where you could push the van but not quite ask too much of it uh, a little bit of a uh, correction halfway around the pond hairpin and that put me out wide on the exit it's just trying to carry as much speed as i as i can with this and, and learning where the limits are having driven the uh, the beast on on the jupiter gravity setting it kind of skews your perspective of what a vehicle is capable of with the with the way that you can throw that thing through uh, i'd already run wide i think it's at turn two i probably clonked the wall that uh, has, uh, has done some damage to this one uh, managed to clip the inside at the exit of the pond hairpin clip the inside and that was enough for the van to go over you've got to remember that you know this is uh, an off-road kind of off-road racing version of the van very very high center of mass in this one which will cause yeah no end of problems if it starts going over and with the increased gravity if it does get up on its side uh, enough it's just gonna fall it's just gonna fall over it's just gonna throw the vehicle down so yeah again it took a little bit of uh, of time to adjust i didn't actually remember to put in the right radio in fact actually, i think this came with a performance radiator to be honest so the crazy crazy levels of uh, power going on in this one uh, we didn't we didn't have issues with it uh, cooking its engine as we go through this uh, second corner once i've got the uh, braking correct now 
I, again, I think because I, after you know driving the vehicle with the Jupiter Gravity, this didn't feel like it was massively, brutally faster than the sort of normal vehicle that went with the with the default gravity with the earth gravity however when i'm looking back and looking at the speeds you know now that this vehicle is achieving through the corners you can see that it has got a, you know better grip we're getting up 45 miles an hour i have to have a little bit of a lift on the exit of that hairpin but you are carrying very very good speed with this the the question is whether the extra corner speed that you can get out of it is undone slightly by the fact that it can't you know can't put its power down as much going uphill that's where the the gravity will be give you a negative impact fortunately this course is mostly downhill there's a couple of sections you know off the very start and then through these final corners that are a little bit uphill but uh, yeah most of it being downhill means that uh, the, the the positives on the most part outweigh the negatives but you see you can't quite carry the crazy levels of speed through the s's here you can still carry good speed on the exit as we run up towards the line and it's 107 miles an hour across the finish line for the vanster yeah, it was definitely um, an interesting experience. And then we have some uh, celebratory donuts. Apparently, the <laughs> the van very very good when it comes to uh, to doing donuts. Also, I love driving this this vehicle. It's a fantastically crazy vehicle for off roading, and the suspension with the with the increased gravity really held its own. It was uh, yeah perfectly tough enough to survive all of the the heavy impacts or slightly heavier impacts and carry all of the speed through the corners at the end of the day i think we've got a slightly bent up bonnet is about all of the damage done to that car on to the times and we almost have a new leader not quite for the beast it goes into second place a 123.3 from that that is just corner speed that is just corner speed however it is still over a second down on that capri that just goes to show how absurdly fast the Group 5 Capri was down this course. The Beast beats the 1800 horsepower Sunburst, the Formula Car, the Hill Climb Sunburst, and so on. That is a mighty time. The Vanster also sets a very, very impressive time. Goes into 13th place at 134.3, only a tenth of a second down on the Gymkhana Covet, two tenths down on the Pigeon Steak. Very, very close area of the table. It is six seconds faster with that gravity setting than, it, than the standard car. That's how much of a difference. It didn't feel necessarily like six seconds faster. However, overall, over the course of the run, yeah, that's a big gain. That's a big gain from some, some different gravity settings. Down at the bottom, though, we find the ETK 800, as you would expect, really, with the moon gravity, certainly did struggle with the car. Four minutes it took to drive down the canyon, over a minute slower than the cement mixer. However, it did actually get to the finish, unlike the T-Rex and its giant, giant trailer, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, quite... Uh quite a difficult vehicle to <laughs> to drive down crashes very well you get very spectacular rolls out of it but in terms of driving yeah not not quite so good so yeah there you go if you want to go uh, to go quickly uh, just up the gravity a little bit that that tends to make wonders in terms of finding stage time however that is going to be it from me thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye Thank <laughs> you.